Hey Aqua Amigos, so this is where we left off in my last video. We got the RPE pond liner down into the pond and the next step is to attach it to the bottom drain and make a seal. And once again, major shout out to my dad for helping me out so much with this. Right now he is drawing an outline of the drain on the top of the liner and this is the part we will need to cut out. We put some rocks on top of the liner to see if that would kind of help hold the liner flat, but it didn't really work. Alright guys, so here goes the critical part. My dad's going to start cutting the inside of the liner. Moment of truth guys. We're at the point of no return. We're going a little bit smaller than the actual drain just to account for a, you know, a little bit of error. In case if we make some mistake here. How does it cut? Is it kind of difficult? No, it's quite easy actually. Oh, nice. But probably the new blade helped too. Yeah. Yeah, we could take that out. We still have tape over the screw holes, I think. Yeah. Cool. So we got to clean it and stuff. Uh, we're going exactly by the directions that Rhino included with the bottom drains. So I know other people might do things a certain way, uh, but we're going to go exactly by the directions. The next step was to make the holes for the screws. And to do this, it's important that the liner is not shifting as you make your holes, because then your holes won't line up correctly. And the instructions actually surprised me at this point. They say to cut an approximate one quarter inch hole for each screw, which is slightly larger than the bolt diameter. I'm not 100% sure why this is, but I'm assuming it is to assure that no pieces of the liner end up going into the screw holes. Once we finished the install completely, it all made sense, but to be honest, I was a little bit nervous at this point. But anyways, as you can see, my dad used some screwdrivers to make the holes and then an X-Acto knife to cut out the holes properly. We then test fit the top flange and my dad cut away some of the excess liner and it all fit perfectly. The instructions then say to clean the surfaces where the adhesive will be applied, meaning underneath the liner and the bottom part of the flange. They say to use a degreasing household cleanser. Um, we just used dish soap and water, and then of course we used a rag with clean water to rinse the surfaces. So we're definitely taking our time with this part just to make sure that we're doing it right. And as you probably noticed, I'm letting my dad do most of the work because I trust him a little bit more than myself. But we're finally ready to put down the adhesive and the instructions actually have a little diagram on how you should put it down and it's actually like this so you're going around the screws kind of like that and they are they are very adamant about not letting any adhesive touch the the holes for the screws they like mention it many times in the instructions so yeah we're gonna try to be pretty careful with that and uh do exactly what the instructions say oh. like this much you say yeah, that'll, that'll be good over there. Okay. Yeah. And then we move around. You know. Okay. No, let's just go. And you're kind of going to do a weaving like it shows in the instructions? Yeah, so yeah, go one, one time and then a second time. Then do the other side. Yeah. So we got to go around like twice. Yeah. 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 The instructions recommend using an adhesive called Lexel, which is what we used. And they say that the bead of adhesive should be about half of an inch. So one thing it says is don't press down on the liner afterwards. Mm, okay. And uh, not to press down on the ring either. We kind of just let the screws do the oh, tightening. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So as I was just mentioning, the instructions say not to press down on the liner or the ring over the liner after you've applied the adhesive. I think the reason they say not to do this is because if you are to press down, the adhesive will make its way into the screw holes because it will get flattened out. And of course, you need to be able to get the screws into the holes. So the instructions say that you actually just let the screws do the tightening, and they even say not to tighten them too much, because if you tighten the screws too much, it's going to push out all that adhesive that you have under the liner, and it won't be able to make a good enough seal. All right, so now we got to get this and the screws. Yeah, I guess we kind of just... 
Here we are placing the ring, or as the instructions call it, the top binding plate, gently over the liner and making sure that the holes are lining up. First, we are just hand tightening the screws, and then we are going back and tightening them with the screwdriver in a crisscross pattern, meaning that you tighten one screw a little bit, and then you tighten the screw on the opposite side a little bit, and then go back to the opposite side and tighten the next screw a little bit, and so on and so forth. We did this until we noticed the adhesive beginning to ooze out from between the liner and the base flange. And the instructions say if the liner starts to bulge, it means that the screws are too tight and they need to be loosened slightly. We then just used our fingers to smoothen out the adhesive that oozed out. All right, Aquamigos, so we officially have the bottom drain sealed to the liner, and the instructions recommend leaving the, the adhesive for 24 hours to fully dry. Luckily, I believe the rain tomorrow isn't going to be starting until 24 hours from now. So 24 hours from now, you know, we'll start filling this up with water. The rain will probably help fill it up as well. And yeah, once again, the reason that I was like kind of rushing to get to this point is because last time we had rain for several days in a row, it really eroded the inside walls of the pond because there was nothing supporting those walls. Now, once we have water inside the pond, the pressure of the water should be able to hold those walls in place. So that's the plan at least. So I'm really happy with the progress we made and that we were actually able to finish this before the rain. We're going to leave the liner loose like that because once, you know, once we start filling it up, I will probably have to get in there and start kind of smoothing out the edges, making folds. And I just want to make sure that there's enough extra liner around the edges that if it needs to get pulled in, it will. And yeah, we're just gonna have to work with that once, once we're at that point. All right, Aquamigos, so now that liner is sealed to the bottom drain. In my next video, I'm going to be installing the air diffuser to the bottom drain, so make sure to watch out for that one when it comes out. And just really quick, I want to give a shout out to Keeping It Koi. He is a UK-based Koi Pond YouTuber. I'll go ahead and link his channel down in the description below in case you would like to check it out. And guys, please let me know what you think about this new way of me doing shout outs where I kind of focus on one person. I know some people did want me to keep saying the names of everybody who's getting a shout out but what do you guys think about this where i just write their names out on the screen by the way i was in los cabos mexico for five days that's kind of why i went for like a long period of time without uploading a video so anyways guys make sure to stay tuned for my next video if any of you guys would like a shout out all you have to do is go down to the comments below and comment something with the word aquamigo in it if you're new here and you would like to know how i got to this stage in the pond build make sure to check out my pond build playlist i'll have it up here on the screen somewhere and of course if you did like this video i would really appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like that would really help me out a lot if you would like to see more videos by me in the future make sure to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notifications button if you'd like to follow me on instagram i'll go ahead and put my handle right here it's at yt underscore tobias and i'll talk to you guys in my next video peace